Well, hi there, second graders. Let's go back and talk about data a little bit more in your math lessons. You're in unit number 10. Now I want to take you ahead to lesson 10.6. But before we do that, let's just once again think about what this is, data. It's just a collection of facts or a collection of information that we can arrange in some way or another to gain some kind of understanding about it. Now we do it all the time. You do it for comparing things to determining averages and you're seeing a lot of statistical data, information coming at you in the news reports, especially right now on TV. And the whole point of gathering this information, these bits of data, is so that we can really try and come to some understanding or solve some kind of a problem associated with that data. So let's just look on page 683. That's where we're going to start. Page 683. And I think in this lesson, you'll not only get a better understanding of data, how you organize the data, but also how you can then take that data and turn it into some kind of a graph or a chart. On page 683, the question is, Maria recorded rainfall in her town for four months. The question they're asking is, how did the amount of rainfall change from September to December? So we look up on the right-hand corner there, and you see September, October, November, and December. So we've got September... October, November, and December. And the amount of rainfall is in inches. September we had four, October we had three, November we had two, and December we had one. Now, just below that, there's a chart there. It says show how to solve the problem. So you build a chart. Now, when we build this chart, we need to label it. And the label of, of it would be rainfall from September to December. That's what we're going to record in this chart, is the amount of rainfall from September to December. Now, we know that our collection information is in inches. That's our unit of measure. So, we need to have inches And we know that the point where these two lines come together is zero. So we'll come up one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches. We'll stop at five because the biggest amount of rainfall was four inches. Now the next thing we have to do is separate the months. So we're going to have September, and then October, and November, and then December. So now we can build the chart. So our chart will run like this, just like the picture in the book each amount of rain, and then we will separate the months. 
Now, in each one of these months, we're going to write the number of inches of rain. So we look at September, and it was four inches. So here's four inches right here. In the month of October, it was three inches. In the month, month of November, it was two inches. Find your two, go straight across, two inches. And then in the month, month of December, it was one inch. So you go to one inch all the way across to December. Now, what we've basically done here is made a chart where we've listed the amount of rain for each month. And because we've made this graph possible by indicating where each amount of rainfall each month occurs, we can now answer the question. And the question was, how did the amount of rainfall change from September to December? So if we start here at September, we see it dropped in October, it dropped again in November, it dropped again in December. And basically, what you have on this graph is a line that goes downhill. So the answer to that question is, how did the amount of rainfall change from September to December? It dropped by one inch every month. Went from 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1. And it decreased. The amount of overall rain decreased. So, you got all that information out of this one problem on page 683. Now, I want to pick one more problem. And let me see which one we're going to pick here. You see on 684 and 685, same kind of problems where you got to fill in the chart. I'll tell you what, on page 6, well, let's go on page 686. I always like to pick the think smarter problem because it makes you think smarter. You really got to engage that curiosity to find the correct answer. And problem number six on page 686, David measured the snowfall for four weeks. Fill in the bubble next to all the sentences that describe the data. Make the bar graph to solve the problem. So here they're asking you to take the data that you see in week one, two, three, and four of the amount of snowfall that fell, put it into the chart that you see there, and turn that chart into a bar graph. So let's take a look at what we got here. We're pretty much going to have the same thing going into this. Of course, we know this is zero. Now, what we're solving for is the amount of snowfall. Are you with me with this snowfall? That's what we're measuring. And it's going to be over a four-week period. So we're going to have week one, week two, week three, 
in week four. There's our four weeks. And since the snowfall is being measured in inches, this is going to be inches of snow. And we'll go one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch. How many inches are in the chart here? Well, the largest number of snowfall was four inches. So now, let's just extend all our lines across. And then split out our four weeks. All right, so now we have a chart on the board here that looks just like the chart in the book. Now what we're going to do is we're going to insert the information in in the book on page 686 says week one one inch so here's week one we're going to come up just make a dot on the one inch line week two two inches find your two come across just make a dot on that line there Week three was three inches, so come find your three, your dot there. And then week four is four inches, find your dot on four inches. Now, they want us to build a bar graph. So, each one of these, this is the first bar. The second bar is going to take you up to two inches. The third bar is going to take you up to three inches. And then the fourth week, you're at four inches. So there's your bar graph now. That's pretty easy, right? Just put the bars in where the data tells it you should go. Now, just below that on page 686, there's some bubble bubbles and you need to either check it or not check it if it's true to the data. There are five of them there. The first one is there were two inches of snow in week two. And you look at your chart in week two, there was two inches of snow. So you can check that bubble. The next bubble is the amount of snowfall increased each week. Each week, beginning with week one, that snowfall did that. So yes, you can check that bubble too, because it did increase. The third bubble says the snowfall decreased from week three to week four. Well, here's week three and here's week four. Did four decrease? No, it actually increased by one. So that third one doesn't get a check mark. Number four there were a total of four inches of snow in week two and week three. Now it's asking for a total, and that means addition, right? And it's asking you whether or not four inches of snow fell in week two and week three. Well, week two, we had two inches of snow. Week three, we had three inches of snow. Two plus three equals five. So there was not a total of four inches. That one is incorrect. There was actually five. Finally, number five there, there were three more inches of snow. There were three more inches of snow in week four than in week one. Week one had one inch. Week four had four inches. And there were indeed three more inches of snow in week four. 
So, that's what I wanted to go over with you today, is how you solve problems, because what's the point of having data if you don't somehow use it to get some information and solve a problem you might have? Go ahead and keep investigating this chapter, and if you have any specific question, have your teacher let me know what it is, and we'll try to go over it more specifically. Meanwhile, second graders, have a good day. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe, and be kind.